Okay, today's daf is Petet, which is 89. This is Kol Gagot, the new Perek. Kol Gagot Ha'ir Rishut Achat, Ubelvat Shelo Yeh Gag Gavua Yud O Namuch Yud, Divrei Rabbi Meir. So it says that if you have a line of houses, in other words, the way that they had neighborhoods was that the houses were lined up, let's say, on one side of the street, and everybody has a flat roof. In theory, you could go from one roof to the next. Um, you could jump from one roof to the next, just like, you know, sometimes see these buildings that, you know, they're all lined up on the top of the roof. You could jump from, they have pictures, yeah, and they're uh, from one to one. Yeah, you can, no, that's, Superman leaps over a tall building in a single bound. This is when you're already on, you're already on the roof, you could step over to the next roof, that's easier. Yeah, where you had those, they're lined up, yeah, he has a picture there, yeah, there's a picture there. They're all lined up in a, in a row, so you could walk from one roof to the next. Uh, 104. Okay. So the uh, in the, in the illustrations. So the so he says as long as you don't have a situation where one roof is ten tefachim higher than the other one. So that's that's what um, uh, and the, we'll see in the Gemara why that is. In other words, as as long as they're even enough with one another that there's no ten tefach gap where one is ten tefachim higher or lower than the one adjacent to it. That's according to Rabbi Meir. So, meaning you can carry, so kol gagot ha'ir means that even though these houses didn't make an eruve chatzerot together, there's no relationship between the houses, still you can walk from roof to roof. Let's say you, you store certain things on the roof, you can walk from the roof to the next roof to the next roof to the next roof, and it's all considered one reshut. The rabbis say, no, we completely disagree with you. Just like the houses are individually owned, right? And normally they would have to make an eruve chatzerot if they wanted to share space. So too, we say that the roofs are individually owned rishuyot, and you cannot transfer from one to the other unless these houses have made an eruve chatzerot between them. So Rabbi Shimon comes along and says a qualification. He says, you know what? Roofs and chatzerot, courtyards and karpefot. Kar, a karpaf is something which is enclosed, but it's not ladira. It's not hukaf ladira. So for example, a field that's enclosed where we said that up to a certain size... Up to a certain size, you can you can carry in there. Past a certain size, you can't. Okay. No, it's a, a, a carpe foot is like a uh, like a field or a park. It's like a park. It could be also no, not on a roof. It could so, be a place where they store wood. They could be. Like could be. Yeah. So the uh, but the point is, it's not for living in. So what he says is la kelim shishavtu betochan. So for example. If you have, um, you leave your uh, you leave certain items out in your chate. You leave certain items out in your courtyard. So let's say you have your courtyard and next to you is another courtyard. These two courtyards did not make an eruv together. Your courtyard has its own eruv. The neighboring courtyard has its own eruv. The neighboring one has its own eruv, but they're not connected to one another. So there's no inter-courtyard eruv. So what does that mean? That means if I have stuff that I left, according to Rabbi Shimon, if I have stuff that I left in my courtyard... I can take it and go to the next courtyard. And I can take it from that courtyard to the next. The only thing I can't do is I can't take something from my house into my courtyard and then to the next courtyard. Mm. In other words, the houses, there's a problem with. But anything that was in my courtyard at the beginning of Shabbat, I can move it to another adjacent courtyard and to another one and to another one. I just can't bring things from my house and bring them to a different courtyard. They, those can only go to my courtyard. That's what Rabbi Shimon says. So he says these carpe fot, all of these... Outdoor enclosures, basically. Roofs, uh, 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 courtyards, carpe foot, all these outdoors and cl- outdoor enclosures, if they are contiguous with one another, in other words, they, you can go from d- one directly to the other without being in an open space, obviously, because if you're in an open space, you're in that a Rishut Arabim. No, 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 of course not. These are all connected to one another. That's what I'm saying. You're in an enclosed area the whole time, but there's no Eruv between the two things, because you have neighboring Chatzerot that are adjacent to one another, and you go from one to the other without ever being in an unenclosed area. In but, other words, you're in a that, that where you could have had you could have had one but you don't but or maybe you couldn't have because there's a solid wall there and you couldn't have we don't uh, know okay, okay we're, the Gemara is going to yeah. clarify that but it doesn't really matter the idea is that these are all considered one thing what divides up is the houses 
So therefore, according to Rabbi Shimon, if you left something on your roof, you can go from roof to roof to roof to roof to roof, no problem. You don't have to have an eruv between the houses um, like the Chachamim say you do. So the Gemara says, Yativ Abaye Baravin, Rabbi Chanina Baravin, Abaye Baravin and Rabbi Chanina Baravin were sitting together, Yativ Abaye Gabayu. And Abaye himself was with them, Yativ Abaye and they said, Bishlam Arabban and Savre Kishim Shiti Arin Chalukin the Matakach, the Arin Chalukin the Mala. So the position of the Chachamim is very simple. They say, just like these dwellings are distinct from one another on the bottom, in other words, these houses are distinct from one another. So too, their roofs are distinct from one another. In other words, each roof has its own identity. That makes sense? Ela Rebbe Meir my Kasavar. But Rebbe Meir is a hard nut to crack. Why? Because I Kasavar Kishim Shidur in Chalukin the Matakach Dur in Chalukin the Mala Amay Rishut Achaten Vi Kasavar in Chalukin Kol Dilem Kol Dechol Le Mala Miyud Rishut Achati Afilu Gagavu Asar Vanemochi Asar Nami. So the problem is with Rebbe Meir because if Rebbe Meir holds, obviously Rebbe Meir cannot maintain that just like the houses are distinct below, they're also distinct above. He can hold that because he says you can go from roof to roof to roof without any eruv between these houses. So we don't say that if I'm on top of a roof of house A, I'm in a different domain than when I'm on the roof of house B. He's saying it's all one thing. Roof is a separate category, according to him. But if that's true, then why is there a difference if one roof is, let's say, 10 tvachim higher or lower than the other one? Why is that? So that doesn't fit the profile. So Amar Luhu Abaye Abaye says Lo Shemei Luhu Had Amar Rav Yitzchak Bar Avdimi. That didn't you hear what Rav Yitzchak Bar Avdimi said? Omer Hayya Rabbi Meir that Rabbi Meir used to say Kol Makom Shetam Motzei Shetir Rishuyot Ve'En Rishut Achat. He said any time you find two Rishuyot but they're really one Rishut. What do you mean? Kegon Amud Berishut Yachid Gavu Asar Berachav Arba Asur Lechatef Alav Gezera Mishum Tel Berishut Arabim. Rebbe Meir, we learned about this in Masechet Shabbat, that Rebbe Meir has a unique position, which is, if you have a reshut within a reshut, so for example, in your own house, let's say in your house, you, you know, like people have all these kind of artwork and things like that, let's say you had a pillar in your house, it's 10 tefachim high, and it's 4 by 4 tefachim in, in uh, width and length, right? Its dimensions are 4 by 4 tefachim, and it's 10, and it's 10 tefachim high. So what is that? That's the dimensions of a reshut, a reshut yachid. Right? That's already a Rishut HaYachid in your house. So if that, in other words, so you have a Rishut HaYachid in your house, something that has the dimension, if that thing were outside, right, if that thing were outside in the, in the street, it would be considered a Rishut HaYachid. Because it's 10 Tfachim and 4 by 4 Tfachim. So and, but let's say it's, now when it's in your house, Rabbi Meir says you can't take something from the floor in your house and put it on that pillar. Even if the pillar's in your house. Why? Because we're worried that if you do that, you might do that in the Rishut HaRabim. And in the Rishut HaRabim, you'll be taking something that's in the actual Rishut HaRabim and putting it on a pillar that's actually a Rishut HaYachid. So we need to sensitize you. So even in your own house, you, let's say this thing here, if you take something and you put it in that, you're not going to realize that that would be a Rishut HaYachid if you were outside. That kipa thing over there. Except on the except on the Rishut Rabim, you're not allowed to take something and put it four hours away. That's true, but the point is, let's say you pick up something that was already there and you put it on top of this pillar. You just moved it from the Rishut Rabim. There's all kinds of things you can't. Yeah, of course, yeah, of course. Outside, true, so true. Like, we don't hold like this, obviously, oh, yeah. halachically. But so, so, so here we say Hachanami Gezeram Shum Tel Rishut Rabim. So the same idea. In other words, what Rabbi Meir is saying, what Abaye is answering, is that Rabbi Meir's principle is that whenever you have something which is even within a Rishut Yachid, but it's ten Tfachim high and it's four Tfachim in dimension, it's four Tfachim square. So then you have a Rishut Yachid within a Rishut Yachid, and you can't transfer from. Even within a Rishut HaYachid to another Rishut HaYachid. So in the same way, even though all roofs would really be one Rishut HaYachid, if all of a sudden there's a Rishut, there's a one that's ten Tfachim higher, that's like another Rishut HaYachid within the Rishut HaYachid. So even though you have, let's say, all of these other roofs are level with one another, they're all one Rishut HaYachid, and then you have one that's ten Tfachim higher. Or, all of them are level and then all of a sudden there's a drop of Tent Fachim. Meaning that the people who are on the upper plane are Tent Fachim higher than the people on the lower roof. They're like all part of one Rishut HaYachid, but it's a Rishut HaYachid within a Rishut HaYachid because there's, a, there's one part that's Tent Fachim higher than the other. Just like having a pillar of Tent Fachim inside the Rishut HaYachid. And that's so the that's room. why he won't let you carry. Yeah. The Zerubat originates in the Zerubat from the house with the... 
No, the, the other way. Yeah, the, the, the Gezerah that within your house, you can't put something right. on a 10 tefa high pillar right. is the basis for right. saying that, saying that when it comes to a roof, if all of a sudden one of the roofs is 10 fachim higher, even though this is a Rishut HaYechid and that's a Rishut HaYechid, it's all one Rishut HaYechid, that Rebbe Meir would say that even in your house, if you had a, a 10 tefa high pillar, you couldn't put something on it. Okay, so that's why he says that, but really he holds that all of these are one Rishut Yachid. Okay, so now, Savor Mina, Afilu Machteshet, Afilu Gigit. So they tried to infer from this that even a Machteshet, even a, um, a mortar for grinding spices, let's say, Afilu Gigit, even a barrel would be prohibited. In other words, you couldn't, according to Rebbe Meir, can you put something on a barrel on Shabbat? Can you put, can you put something on a barrel? Can you put something on a, uh, uh, something that's a spice grinder on Shabbat? So he answered. Answers, no, that uh, the the distinction is Amar This is what the master said. The only thing that Rabbi Meir said was when it comes to a pillar or amata rechaim, the um, the base of the equipment that grinds wheat, the base of it. It has to be something which has a permanent place. So, so the point is that according to Rabbi Meir, this gezerah is a, is a specific gezerah, not just on, let's say, a movable piece of furniture, like I gave the example of, you know, a, uh, uh, you know the kippah thing here. That wouldn't be a good example because the kippah thing gets moved around all the time. He's talking about something which never leaves its place, something that's always stationary, that has a fixed place, just like the roofs of these houses. Obviously, they don't move anywhere. So too, within your house, if you had a structure that was fixed in place, that was ten tefachim and four by four tefachim, ten tefachim high and four by four tefachim in its dimension, then it would be considered a rishut yechid within a rishut yechid. But not just anything ten tefachim high. Then you couldn't use the table. You wouldn't be able to put something on the table. It's also a rishut yechid then, according to that. All right. All right. So now the um, the Gemara says that. What about a wall between two chatserot? That's fixed in place. And a typical wall could be ten, would certainly be ten tefachim high and would be four tefachim wide. So it should be considered a rishut yachid. Va'amar Rav Yehuda, kishetin tel amar le'de Rabbi Meir gagin rishut latzman, chatserot rishut latzman, karpefot rishut latzman. He said, if you take a look, Rabbi Rav Yehuda said, if you really analyze Rabbi Meir, you'll see that just like he holds that all roofs are one reshut. He also holds that all chatserot are one reshut. And that all karpefot are one reshut. So even if you had multiple chatserot in a row, not with an eruv between them, but chatser number one, chatser number two, chatser number three, and they're all lined up, they're all adjacent to one another, that these chatserot are all one reshut, meaning you could go from one to the other. But wait a second, what about, how are you going to get from one chatser to the other? By the wall. You're going to climb over the wall. And the wall is a Rishut HaYachid. And according to Rabbi Meir, a Rishut HaYachid, you can't move from a Rishut HaYachid to a Rishut HaYachid that's 10 Tfachim higher. So how can you go from your Chatzir to the wall? You're going from your Rishut, you're moving stuff. Let's say you want to carry, we're not talking about going places, we're talking about carrying stuff. You can't carry something onto the wall because it's 10 Tfachim higher than the floor of the Chatzir. So what are you going to do? the status of the wall by putting a ladder on well, maybe, but let's assume we, we don't have that, right? So, my love, the Shaila tells to Lederach Kotel. So, isn't he telling us that we can climb over the wall? No, very simply, Rabbi Meir will be consistent. He'll say, you know what? If you have a wall, even you, you cannot climb onto it and carry stuff. There's no way, because it's a Rashut Yachid within a Rashut Yachid. However, if there's a door through the wall, that's when you can carry from your Chatzir to the next Chatzir. He's saying if there's a door in the wall. You're right, you can't put stuff on the wall according to Rabbi Meir because it's fixed in place, mm-hmm. it's solid, it doesn't move, and it's a, the r- dimensions of a Rishut HaYachid. So even though you're going from one Rishut HaYachid to another, you can't. You can go from one Chatzir to another as long as you're on ground level, but you can't go to this Rishut HaYachid that's ten Fachim higher than the ground floor of your Rishut HaYachid because you might mix that up with, let's say, a wall that has the dimensions of a Rishut HaYachid sitting in a Rishut HaRabim. Rabbi Meir is worried about that. The next piece of Gemara says, Itmar says, now we learned that the rabbis say that each one of these roofs, just like the houses below, are distinct rishuyot, they are distinct domains, so too are the roofs distinct domains. So Itmar stated, Rav Amar in Mitaltalin Boela Bidalidamot, Ushmuel Amar Mutaltil Bukhulo. So the the question is, what can you do on your roof? The rabbis are saying each roof is its own domain. You can't carry from roof to roof. What's the, uh, what kind of uh, carrying can you do on your roof? What are the limitations here? What are the parameters? Rav says you can only carry up to Dalit Amot, meaning what are we treating it as? 
A Rishut Rabim or maybe a Carmelite, right? Maybe better a Carmelite because it's not really for public uh, tra- you know, transportation, tra- public uh, thoroughfare. Let's say it's a Carmelite. And Shmuel says, We treat it like a Rishut Yachid. You can carry along your entire roof. Everyone agrees that when the walls are discernible, in other words, you can see the roof, the edge of the roof, you can see where the walls of the building are. We, everyone agrees that you can carry on the entire roof. But they're only arguing in a case where the mechitzot cannot be seen. In other words, let's say you have a situation where the two buildings are flush with one another so that you can't really see the edge of, one, of the wall of your roof. You can't see the edge of the wall of your roof because it's flush with... The, you don't know where it ends. You could walk easily from your roof onto the next roof and never see a bump. You don't see the wall of your roof. So then we're going to say there, it's not discernible, the wall on that side. So we would say, there, Rav Amar in Metatalin Bo, Ela Bidalid Amot, Rav says that we don't allow you to carry on that roof. Why? Lo Amar, because we don't say good asik mechitzta. Generally, we have a principle of good achit mechitzta and good asik mechitzta, which means that we imagine in our imagination, we extend walls upward or downward. Right? So good asik mechitzta means we extend them upward. So since you have the walls of the building and you're on top of the building, you're on the roof, we say those walls really extend up to the sky. You now, they're imaginary. Now, right, we extend up to the sky. Okay, so. Right, Rav says though, right, Rav says that's only when you can see the edge of the wall. But when there's two buildings together and they're flush with one another, you can't see the edge of your building. So you can't use it. And therefore, it's open on that side. Maybe the other three walls, maybe not. But the one that you can't see, or if there's three and you're in the middle one, the one that you can't see is not going to. It's not going to work. And Shmuel Amar Mutal Tatev Kulo, the Amar Good Asik Machitzta, that 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 according to Shmuel, you can. Um, you know, you can carry there because we don't care about whether you're whether the machitzot are discernible or not. As long as you know that they're there, it doesn't matter that you can't even see. In other words, that you can't see the um, the the, uh, the wall. So Rashi explains here: Since each roof is its own domain, and they're open to one another. Okay. We look at it as, in other words, the problem really is here that you have two houses adjacent to one another, abutting one another, and there's no clear separation between the two. They're open to one another. Now, Rav is saying this is a problem because generally we have a principle that any time I'm not allowed to carry from place A to place B, I can carry within place A, but I can't carry from place A to place B. And place A and place B are open to one another with no mechitza, with no division. I can't even carry in place A now because we're worried that I'll carry from place A to place B. Yeah, exactly. Like a row house. There's nothing. Yeah. In other words, the classic case is that you have, the classic case that we've had is the two chatzerot, the two chatzerot that are open to one another on one side. Right? That, there's, that they're open to one another. So there's a big problem because even if one made an Eruv, it's open wide to the other one. So the, uh, where, where they didn't make an Eruv. So that's a problem. So here we have these two roofs. Each one is a separate domain. So they can't carry from one to the other. And they're open to one another. R- Shmuel says they're not open to one another because really these are two buildings. And really the walls shoot up to the sky. So really, they're separate from one another. You just can't see it, but the, the, that middle wall, that middle, the middle wall that would be separating them. In other words, there were four walls to the building. So the three walls that are not touching one another on building A and building B, okay, because they're only touching on one side. They're only touching, let's say, the right, the right side of building A is touching the left side of building B. Okay? And therefore, he says you're allowed to carry. So wait, 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 wait. So Shmuel says, we view house A's roof and house B's roof as totally enclosed. Okay. Because house A has four walls and house B has four walls. And we shoot them up to the sky. Even though you can't see Even though you can't see one of the so, sides of the building. So what he's saying is that that, the only thing that it does is that it does not create a problem for your own roof. On your own roof. But it does only, create a problem. Only your roof. But it does create Each a person can carry on their own roof only. Sure. Right? Rob says, you know what? If you had a real mechitza separating them, fine. But the fact is, you can't see that middle wall. 
anymore because they're flush against each other. You can't see it. So we can't say that there's a real division here. If they were separated in some way. In other words, if you pulled the buildings apart and now you could see the, the respective walls, fine. Or if there's some kind of wall there, fine. But when they're flush together, that you don't see any distinction, Rav is going to say, place A and place B are wide open to one another. There's no wall there, and therefore you can't even carry on your own roof. But if you were erected a wall according to Rav, it'd be okay. That's apparently so, yeah, for sure. Because he's just saying that we can't extend an imaginary so wall when you can't at least notice it. Now, the edge of the other edge of the building, in other words, if you look at the drawing, I mean, you don't really need to draw, but if you look at the edge of the building, um, the, you know, you're standing on the far edge of the building that's not adjacent to building A, or it's not adjacent to building B. Like, you're standing over here, if you look at illustration uh, number, uh, numbers uh, 313 and 314. So when they're separate, it's no problem. Right. Good as is, right. you know, no problem. When they're, when they're next to each other, well, that there's no real distinction between well, the two. there is a distinction on this one. Well, you can't see. Yeah. Let's say, oh, whatever. Or it could either be both or one of them. Okay? But the point is they're open to one another. So we can't necessarily... Now, if you're standing over here on the, on the far side, you see where the roof ends, where the wall ends. But if you're standing over here, you won't see it. You won't see where it ends. And that's why, according to Rav, you can't extend it upwards. Now, Tzanan, it says in the Mishnah, We said in the Mishnah that each roof is a roof in its own right. Now we're going to try to prove Shmuel or Rav to be right. So, Now this makes sense according to Shmuel because the rabbis are saying each roof is its own Rishut, meaning it's its own Rishut Hayachid. It's no problem. But it's a problem for Rav. Why are the rabbis saying each, rishu, each roof is a Rishut of its own? That implies that you can carry on your own roof without any limitation. Amrei be Rav, Mishmei de Rav. They said in the Yeshiva of Rav in the name of Rav. Lo yital, shelo yitaltel shte amod bagagze, u shte amod bagagze. What it means when it says each one is its own reshut is not that you're allowed to carry more than four amot or even a full four amot on your own uh, on your own roof. You're not allowed to because there's no clear distinction between the roofs here. So you're not allowed to carry more than four amot on your own roof. But what it means is you can't even carry two amot on your roof and two amot in the next roof. That's what the Chachamim say. Even though in total you're only carrying four amot, you're, these two rishuyot are distinct. But Rabbi Elazar said, When we were in Babel, we were saying in the house of Rav, Mishmei the Rav, in the name of Rav, that you cannot carry more than four amot on the roof. And the people of the Yeshiva of Shmuel said, All they have is their own gag. All they have is their own roof, meaning they have the entirety of their roof. So my en lahel elagagan. What does it mean? They have nothing but their own roof. Love the sharul tatlay b'kuleh. Doesn't it mean that in their version of the Mishnah, in other words, in 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 the Yeshiva of Shmuel, in their version of the text, it said en lahen elagagan. All they have is their roof, meaning they're not allowed to go to the next roof, but they have their entire roof. Okay? Doesn't that mean they can carry the entire roof? Umi ali mami matnitin. That's not. So the Gemara answers. That's not really any stronger than our Mishnah. Just like our Mishnah said that your reshut, that your your roof is its own domain, and the next guy's roof is its own domain. So too, in Shmuel's version of the Mishnah, it says all they have is their roof. That doesn't mean that they have the t- entirety of their roof, because the Okim We can still say that you can't. That what it means to say is not that you can carry on in the entire roof, but just that you can't carry two amot on your roof and two amot on the other roof. What it means is you can't carry two amot on your roof and two amot on the other roof. That's all it's trying to say. So we can prove from the text of the uh, Mishnah or from the Tosefta text or the, uh, of the Baraita text or, or uh, you know, that Shemuel had, we can't prove that you can carry along the entirety of the roof when the roofs are flush together. Amar Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef said, Lo hashmata. I never learned this idea that you're telling me now, says Rav Yosef. Now remember, Rav Yosef had Alzheimer's or something in his old age. He forgot a lot of what he learned uh, or, and even what he taught. He said, I don't remember learning this halacha that Shmuel says that 
even walls you can't see extend up to the heavens. I don't remember learning this. And I don't remember teaching it. So Amar le Abaye, Abaye who was always reminding him, said, At Amrat Nialan, you taught us it. Ve'aha Amrat Inialan, and you taught it to us in the following case. Gag gadolas mukhlagatan. If you have a large roof next to a small roof, okay, Hagadol Mutarva Katanasur, you're allowed to carry on the large roof, but not on the small roof. Now, if you want to see what this is looking like, you can look at illustration number. 315. So why is it that uh, why is it that there's a distinction here? Because the what it means by a gag gadol is wider and gag katan is narrower. So what happens is if you are on the gag katan, okay, your the end of of the roof of the of the small uh, uh, roof is totally flush with the large roof. So if you're in the small roof, you don't see any distinction. However, if you are on the large roof. The side, the left and the right side of the roof on the Gag Gadol is not flush with the, with the small roof. Because look, it's open. Because the, the small roof only takes up, let's say, the center of... It's only flush with the center of the large roof. But the right and left, the flanks of it are open. So actually, if you're standing on that edge, you'll see... You'll see... The edge, right? So even Rav... Right. So even Rav could say... Yeah. That yeah maybe but even Rav could say that that would extend upwards because you can actually see those right. you can see the edge so that so um, so and you said alan you told us about this Amar Rav Yudah Amar Shmuel Rav Yudah said Shmuel said Lo Shanu Ela Sheish Diurin Al Zeve Diurin Al Zeh the only time that this is true is when there were people living on both roofs in other words there are people going back and forth between the roofs during the week the Hav Yala Ha Dekatan Mechitza Nidreset Aval En Diurin Al Zeve Al Zeh Shnehen Mutarin but you told in other words the problem is that if there are people walking back and forth across these roofs all the time. So then, that's where we say, okay, that the, that the small one doesn't have a mechitza. Because why? Because it's called mechitza nidreset. Since people walk back and forth, back to our diagram here, since people walk back and forth across from the large roof to the small roof all the time, so whatever mechitza you might imagine being here for the small roof, look where the yellow line is, whatever you might imagine being at that boundary line between the small roof and the large roof is being trampled on all the time. So it doesn't count. However, if there are not, if there's not foot traffic, if the people who use the large one use only the large one, and the people who use the small one only use the small one, there's no foot traffic across. So then, even the small one is good. Why? Because we will imagine this perimeter here as being a mechitza, even for the small roof. Now, who is that going to be like? Like Shmuel. Because Shmuel says, even if it's flush with the next building, we imagine that end of the small building as if it rises up into the sky. Okay? So that's what Shmuel said. Shmuel said that even though the small one is flush with the large one, so fr- if you're standing on the small one, you don't see an end to your roof on that side. You don't see an end to it. You walk right onto the large one. It doesn't matter because we know the building ends and therefore extends up to the ceiling. Yes? No, I'm just trying to be clear. You're still going to, if you're on a small roof and you're in the middle, so you've got flanks, so... Behind you is... Nothing. The left and right is nothing. Well, you can see it. That's what I. That's what I said from the beginning. I mean, I guess. Yeah, but that's not your building. That's the other building. I know, but if you could see. Yeah, but that's not your building. In other words, you can't see anything in your building that's an edge. It has to be in your building that you can see. The fact that you can see that the other building starts doesn't mean that you can see your building. Your building. All you have to. All you have to see is. Because what you're extending. What you're extending is your building. Ah, but the sense. But but you're. But you're. You're uh, the only. Because the problem. Because the whole problem is that you. Because the whole problem is that you have what's called something that's nifratz b'milua. It's open. It's nifratz b'milua la makom acher. It's it's completely open to the to the place that you can't carry into. So So the people in the small building. Can't, their building is completely flush with the next one. They're going to walk right into that large roof, and they're not allowed to do that. No, and there's nothing in there. Argument. There's no place where their building stops. But using the their large argument, building, people have a a place where they can see that there's an edge. No, you're right. No, there should be. You're right. Yeah, I don't know why there isn't one. Um, okay, there should be like a fence around the top of the roof. Well, yeah. Well, right. I mean, yeah. I mean, exactly. <laughs> so you're absolutely right. You're right. I didn't think about that, but you're right. Yeah. Absolutely. You're right. 
You're, you're absolutely right. No, but I mean, that's a, this, this is just too... too that's a good question. No, you're right. You're right. Why don't they have one? Yeah. It's a theoretical case. It's coming next week. It's coming. Yeah. 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 So, um, okay. So, no, but you're right. So, that, so basically, the principle is being illustrated here that for the small group, they have to have their own wall fencing them in. And their mechitza is not nikeret. It's not visible. So according to Rav, Rav is going to say the small group doesn't have a wall. Only the large group is considered to have a wall. And therefore the small group can't carry. Shmuel will say it's okay unless there's a lot of foot traffic all the time between the two. Because then whatever invisible fence there is uh, for, the small, for the small roof is going to be trampled on and we won't count it anymore. Okay, so Amar Lei he said to Ana Hachi Amri this is what I must have said to you, says Rav Yosef. So he said, I didn't say anything about foot traffic on the roof. What I said was that the only time we say this halacha about carrying from one roof to another Okay, about the large and the small roofs, where we said that uh, the, the, the large roof is permit, you're mit, permitted to carry and the small one you're prohibited to carry. Okay, that's only where there is a mechitza. In other words, there's some kind of a wall. Because the large, uh, the large one will be permitted with its wall. Okay, and the small one it won't be, because the small one is open directly to the large one. So let's take a look at what he means. <laughs> From the illustration, I believe there is one. <coughs> because in the, like, over here. So, this is what he's talking about. So the large one has a wall around its entire perimeter, and the wall has flanks. So one side, the right, left side is completely covered, the right side is completely covered, the back side is completely covered. The front side that faces the small one is covered on the sides. There are flanks. Yeah. The small one is covered only on three sides. Its fourth side is completely open. Yeah. Because nobody's going to fall. What does it mean flanks? Flanks means sides. In other words, there's two sides covered. So, so if you were to look at the large, if you're inside the large roof, what you see is a wall on the left, a wall on the right, a wall behind you, and in front of you, a wall with an opening. But there's a wall because there's a piece here and a piece here. If you're standing in the small one, all you see on the fourth side is... Uh, open space. Uh, but you see the edge, open right? space. Yeah, but you, you see open space from. There's nothing for you though. You won't see that. I know. You're in here. The edges. The edges. No, no, is the, the edges of yours. You you only see an That's opening. You walk right in. Look, you're not going to see this. I know, but the same way that they see this as the mechitza, the people in here can see the only edges. when they come mechitza. around. Yeah, but that's not really anything. That's to them. It's flush with the wall. If you're standing here, you're just going to see a wall until you turn. Until you turn, you're not going to see anything. If you're like this, okay, if you're like this, and you see this, you know that this is your mechitza. Yeah, but you don't really see. It's I mean, not unless, really, yeah. unless it curves, you can right? you can do this. Unless, and see it. unless it curves, and then you and then you don't see it. Like unless it's like this. It's a corner. It's a right? take. It's a it's a corner. It's a ninety degree angle. So you're not going to see it unless you're right there. You'll you'll you have to look around, but you're not gonna you're not gonna see it. So so does that answer you? So what's so wait. So well, the, right. it's a good question separately yeah, from this. Separate, you know, it's a good yeah. separate question. Why they don't ever mention what does Marquez serve in any way to help with with. with that's a good question. Yeah. I didn't even think about it. Um, so the, so the, but they don't discuss it here, but it's a good question. Now, in this case, this wall would obviously serve as a maquette too. But so if you have it, so Rav Yosef is saying there's no issue of whether people walk back and forth between the two roofs. The issue is walls. If there's a wall around the entire perimeter of the two roofs, so what ends up happening is that the large one is permitted and the small one is not. But if there's no wall, nobody can carry up there because there's no because we don't hold that that, that invisible wall in between the two houses is going to rise up. Okay, so the, what now who does that sound that like? There has to be an actual wall. There has to be something you can actually see. Now, what does that mean? That means like Rav, because Rav is the one who says. You need something to be there. You can't imagine if it's flush. If the two, if the buildings are flush with one another, we can't just imagine a wall protruding upwards the way that he wants us to imagine it. Okay. So, so, but then Abaye objects again, and he says, "Wait a second. That I don't understand." He says, "But but you said something about 
people being up there being a significant factor. I remember that for sure. So, I amri lechu diurin. So, Rav Yosef said, if I mention something about the people up there, so, hachi amri lechu. This is what I must have said. Lo shanu ela shiyesh machitza ruoya ladira. Al ze. O machitza ruoya ladira al ze. De gadol meshe bagifu fei bekatan nifratz pimidu wo. Aval yesh machitza ruoya ladira ala gadol. Ve'en ruoya ladira ala katan. Afilo katan. Share levne gadol. Mai ta'ama. Kevan te lo avud machitza. Saluke saliku nafshayu. So very interesting. So what he says is that, again, we're not talking about a case where there's no fence around this wall. There is a fence around the entire wall. And so what ends up happening is that there's a, and there are two possibilities. A mechitza ru'uya ledira, a real solid permanent mechitza, or some kind of a temporary makeshift thing that's not really reliable. So if the entire perimeter is covered with a mechitza ha a solid, reliable mechitza. So then the halakha that we said before applies. That since you have a situation that if you're in the large one, you can see the two sides, so you feel enclosed, then the people on the large one are good. The people on the small one are not That's exactly what I was saying. Okay, yeah. In, other words, in other words, they want an actual wall because you can see the mechitza from here the same way you see the mechitza from here. No, the no fact you that can't you see the because you can't see this. Wall, the small road. No, here you see a wall. Here you don't see a wall, but you see a mechitza because you see a corner. You see a corner, yeah, but you have to be able to see the solid part. Right, you're right. So you have to right. see a wall. Yeah, That's but what so, so these people definitely can carry. The people on the large one can carry up to their edge. That's, that's that way. But he says, however, if it would be that the large roof has a solid wall and the small roof only put up a makeshift, uh, some kind of a, a temporary wall, so then the people in the big roof can carry even in the small area. The entire place becomes theirs. Why? Because he says, since these people in the lar- using the large roof put up a solid permanent mechitza, and the people in the small one only put up a temporary insignificant mechitza, they showed that they don't really want to use the roof. And that they're giving up their rights to the large one, that the large one is dominant. So then not only can the large one carry in their space, they can even carry in the small space because basically they're being mevatel. They're saying, you know, we're not going to finish our basement. You know, we're not going to finish our roof. We're just going to leave it uh, this way and you guys do whatever you want. So then the large one says, hey, now it's all ours. We can take the whole thing. And this is similar to, that if, if you have houses that are in a row and they have roofs that are contiguous with one another and one guy puts a ladder connect so that he can get from his ground floor to the roof, all the roofs are his. Why? Because since nobody else bothered to put up a ladder, and he did, they're basically saying, take it. Right, you're the only one who cares. So, and so, and Amar Abayabai says, Bana alial gabe beto, daka arba. Let's say a person builds, you have again, a series of roofs that create a sort of a flat plane, elevated plane, and you have one guy, and this is also illustrated here, I think, um, you have one guy, yeah, this is, uh, this, is on, this is 317 and 318, who makes on top of his roof a sort of a, an area here, a, a sort of aliyah, an upper chamber with a door. And that door opens, this four tefach opening goes to a, goes to the roof space. So because only one guy made this kind of a structure on top of his house, which is clearly to allow him to come up into it and to come onto the roof space. Since he's the only person who made something like that, the entire space belongs to him because nobody else bothered. If everybody wanted to use the space, they would have made one too. Instead, he created an enclosure of his part of the roof and an opening to get to the rest of the roofs. So they're like, okay, you take it then. If they want to lay claim to theirs, they should put up something around their, around their roofs too. They're giving it up to him. And what is the... Um, What's the purpose of CO318? That's the next case. The <laughs> that's next case. an interesting one. Yeah, the next case. So, so he says, however, right, so Amar... If somebody wants to turn to the side. No, 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 it'll tell you, it'll tell you why. Amar, I hope not. Amar Ravarava says, Pa'amim shadakal isur. Sometimes making that structure on your roof is negative. Why? Because... Ha'echida me da'avida la'adei tarbitza de'bete. Da'amar linture tarbitza hu da'avida. Then that's where we end on Tzadi Amun Aleph. That basically what he says is that if you make a structure on your roof, 
So you're laying claim to that part of the roof for yourself. But, and if you make the door facing the other roofs, you're taking everybody else's too. But what if you make a structure on your roof, but you make the opening over your garden? In other words, you want to be able to look at your garden on Shabbat. You want to sit there and have a cup of coffee and look at the garden. Okay? Now, what are you showing, though? Do you want this roof space? No, yeah, well, maybe they're definitely in my case. No, so, uh, but this person who is since he made the door in his enclosure he encloses his part of the roof and he makes the door in the enclosure face the garden overlook the garden away from the, the other roofs but the other roofs he can't get to hold on so therefore what is he showing that he doesn't want these roofs he doesn't want to be able to get there because if he did why wouldn't he make a door on the back of it so that he could get into the other roofs so therefore what ends up happening by showing that he doesn't want these other roofs He's, show, he's relinquishing his ability to carry in all the other roofs. He's saying, I don't want them. He's, he's, he's withdrawing his right to carry in, those, in that, the rest of the roofs. So that's really what, what, what's being said here. So when you are the... It's like what we said before about people who have a greater advantage in using a space or greater access versus lesser access, right? So since he's in a case where you demonstrate, you put a ladder, you put a structure with a door going right onto the roofs and nobody else says anything... They're basically giving it to you. You're taking it, they're giving it to you. But when you put a structure, and instead of making a door that allows you to use it more readily, you put a door the other way, you're showing, I don't want it, because why would you, uh, why would you put the door the other way? Obviously, you're not interested in making use of the room.